Good to see everybody on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon, evening, like wherever, wherever you are in the world. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. Welcome. Happy Tuesday. Wherever you are. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The part of today's lesson is poetic lessons. Poetic lessons. Biblical life lessons. Today's lesson is just about that. Poetic lessons. Biblical life lessons now what what the reason i came over this lesson do, do, do you guys understand do you guys really understand that we've been having to use the word in order for this channel to survive in order for this channel to get the restoration we got we were actually applying biblical principles in order to get the restoration the holy spirit reminded me last night that even though we lost the channel back in in january in order to survive we applied some biblical life lessons to keep the channel going and then it brought restoration full force we got all the we got all the videos back all the subscribers back and all the viewers back so so the the blessing was we were we were applying biblical principles in life lessons in order to bring restoration around and that's what today's about. Today's about, first of all, I'm gonna bring some of the things out. And I want I want I want you to make sure that you take take note of this for yourself. Make sure when you do your journal, make sure when you do your journal, journal things that you did. For example, if you did something that made you make it through a storm, journal exactly what you did in order to make it through the storm. That is a life lesson. See what you do to use the word of God in your life and survive something. That is a life lesson. It means when you come against the devil again, when the devil hits you that way again, you know exactly what to do. You look at your journal. Look at your journal. And you see what you did. Well, last time, last time I fasted and prayed. And I, I stood still for a whole week. And then suddenly there was a turnaround. That's your journal. Now here comes something very similar again. And you look back at your journal. How did I make it last time? Oh, I, I fasted and prayed for two weeks. I, I stood still. I fell on my face. Oh, I fell on my face. I, I didn't do it. I forgot about that. See, the reason you write down what you did is when you come against the same battle again in a different form, you know what you did last time. God is what? God is the same yesterday, today, forevermore. So what he did in your life yesterday, he'll do again. So remember what you did last time in order to use it again in the future. And that's what this lesson is about. This lesson is about, let me, I'm reviewing what we did the past year to bring the, the channel back. But I want you to take note of what I did in the channel, you do for your own life. Amen. Now, we're going to first go, the first thing to do is when you use the word, when you use the word of God and you hold on to the word of God, I want to, I want to focus on uh, the word should not return void. The word will never return void. When you use the word of God, when you use the word of God, the word itself will never return void. Which means what you're speaking, if you're speaking the word of God, it shall come to pass. I think it's Isaiah 55, 11. Let me Let me check something. I think it's Isaiah 55, 11. Let me make sure. Isaiah 55, 11. Isaiah 55. Let me check. Make sure I give you the right scripture. 55... That's it. That's it. 50, Isaiah 55, 11. That is our text for the day. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Hey, Liz. Hey, Liz, Argentina. So shall the word be that goes, goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I send it. So when you speak the word of God, when you speak the word of God over something, 
when you speak over something, that word is not going to return void. If you speak victory, eventually victory is going to happen. The word will not return void, but you got to have faith. Have, have faith and the words that come out of your mouth. Don't speak in doubt. Speak in confidence with the word of God. If I believe I've received, Lord, I pray, I believe I've received my healing, I shall have it. You believe that. Speak it with faith. Don't speak in fear. Speak it in faith. And when you speak in faith, that's speaking with your faith. And that's your now faith. That is your now faith. When you speak in faith, that is your now faith is what? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Your faith is coming to life when you speak it to life. Life and death, the power of tongue, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. You must speak it. Must speak it. That's what I'm saying. We must speak the word. Speak the word. And hear the word. Speak it. Hear it. What we say? What we say? Speak it. Hear it. Think it. Do it. Speak it. Hear it. Think it. Do it. That's what we got to do. That's what we do every day in order to keep the word fresh on your mouth. Amen. Now, what I want to, I want to go through when the channel got hacked in back in January, the things we did as a fellowship together in order to survive as a fellowship. Remember, the attack on the channel was attacking the ministry. And, and it was trying to also attack this fellowship to keep us from coming together and praise every day and worship every day in spirit and truth. But we, 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 we stood firm. We stood firm and we kept on praising. We kept on praising. And we praised God anyhow. So what do you do? When you praise God anyhow, you do what? You do what? You praise God anyhow. You are learning to be content. The word says, turn to Philippians. Philippians, uh, let's see. Philippians 4.11. Philippians 4.11. Turn to Philippians 4.11. I have learned in whatever state to be content. That is basically what we did. Even though, even though we were upset, we were upset about it, we didn't let it stop us. We didn't let the hack stop us. 411 reads. Now, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. See, Good times and bad times. If you praise God anyhow, you're learning to be content no matter what's happening around you. We only have control of what we do. We have no control over what's going on around us. But we have control over how that around us affects us. So when you've learned to praise God anyhow, you're learning in whatever state, good times or bad times, I've learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. To praise God anyhow. That's where it comes from. That's where it comes from. When you praise God anyhow, good times and bad times, that makes you consistent in good times and bad times because God doesn't change. God doesn't change. So when you hold on to God's unchanging hand and you're content, it doesn't matter what you're going through, good or bad, you are grounded in the word and grounded in the Lord and your connection with the Lord. And that's what makes you stay focused. That's helps you stay connected when you learn to praise God anyhow. That's the first thing we did. First thing we did. And we kept praising and we didn't miss a beat. We went to the other channel. Thank God the ram in the bush, the ram in the bush was my sports channel. And we jumped immediately to the other channel and kept praising. The devil thought he, the devil thought he had us depressed. Hey, Indy Buzz, the devil tried to make us mad. The devil tried to make us depressed. But guess what? We kept on praising. We jumped to the other channel and kept on praising as if nothing ever happened. So we praised God anyhow, even though we were upset. Even though we were upset the channel got, got stolen, we kept praising, kept singing, kept shouting, kept dancing, and didn't miss a beat. Praise God. And that's what happens when you praise God anyhow. When you praise God anyhow, things happen to keep things moving. And that's how you do it. Hey, Justine, Justine, that was number one. So number one was praise God anyhow. I'm giving you a brief list 
of what we've done to keep this channel and bring restoration. Second thing we did, what we do next? Number two, we kept our mind stayed on him. Isaiah 26, three, we kept our mind stayed on him. Even though it didn't matter how many subscribers we lost, we lost a lot of people. We lost a lot of people in a, in a hack. But we kept our mind stayed on him, which is why we're able to praise God anyhow. When you keep your mind stayed on him, distractions can't take you away. And that's why it says, thou should keep him in perfect peace, in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. So when you keep your mind stayed on him, it doesn't matter what the blind side is. The, your mind stayed on him will keep you calm, keep you calm to be able to praise God anyhow. And we did that. And that's how we prayed together. We prayed together. We covered each other together. We pray for the channel. We pray for each other and we kept praising. We pray together, kept praising. We pray together, kept praising. And we praise God anyhow. Number three, we trusted God. Number three, we trusted God. Even though we had to jump to a new channel, I had no idea. I had to find all the videos. I had no idea how many, how many lessons were lost. I said, Lord, I trust you, Lord. It's gonna be all right, Lord. I know we, we took a heavy blow, Lord. We took a heavy blow, but it's gonna be all right. We sing, we sing it every day. Every time I walk, talk, pray, say, with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. So we trusted. Even though we took a blow as a channel, we kept trusting. It's gonna be all right, Lord. We'll get people back. People will find us. We'll just keep on praying, keep on praising. Keep on, keep on doing what we do, every, keep on doing what we do every day. Keep on praying and praising, praying and praising the word of God. Praising, praying, word of God. That's what we did for seven months. For seven months, we kept doing praising, praying, and the word of God. Because we trusted it's gonna be all right. And that's why we sing that song every day. Every time I walk, talk, pray, say, with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. Whatever it is, it's gonna be all right. And we gotta hold on to that. We got to hold on to that. Amen. Number four. <laughs> Number four. This this was for me. Number four. Have no fear, stand still. <laughs> I gotta admit, I I I told you this the day after we moved, we went to the other channel. Have no fear, stand still. We had to do that. I especially had to do it because when I looked at when I realized. Well, I realized that man had taken the entire channel. He had taken the entire channel, 2,800 videos, 34,000 subscribers, and 11 million views were gone like that. I had to, I had to chant that verse. Whew, have no fear, stand still. Have no fear, stand still. Whew, what just happened? Have no fear, stand still. The channel is gone. The channel is gone. Have no fear, stand still. Have no fear, stand still. I had to, I had to chant that. John, John was in shock too. Both of us were in shock that the channel was gone. 13 years of work, gone in a blink of an eye. So we had, that was the application of have no fear, stand still. And the Lord said, have no fear. Go to the other channel. The only way I heard that is because I had no fear and stood still. I couldn't hear that if I was panicked. If I went to panic mode, I would have never heard. I would never have heard the Lord say, go to the other channel. Have no fear. Stand still. Go to the other channel. Keep on praising. Keep on praying. Word of God. Keep on praising. Keep on word. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Go, go to the other channel. Praise. Pray. Stand still. Praise. Pray. Stand still. Don't worry about it. I got this. There's trust. The Lord said, I got this. I got to trust that. If the Lord says, I got this, trust it. So then, that was number four. Had no fear, stand still, number four. That's Exodus 14, 13. Exodus 14, 13. Have no fear, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. See the salvation. I said all the time, stand still and watch God turn everything around. 
What happened, family? What happened? Stand still and watch God turn everything around. And what did he do? Seven months later, eight months later, what did he do? He turned everything around. But until then, until then, have no fear, stand still. For eight months, have no, have no fear, stand still. I, I, I honestly thought, I, I, I really thought the channel was gone. The, the, the devil said, though you, you lost the videos, you lost the movies, you lost everything, you lost everything, it's not coming back. Get me behind me, Satan. I kept saying, Yo, people, what about my videos? I kept going to YouTube every two weeks. What about my videos? Where are my videos? I, I, I don't care about the channel. What happened to all my videos? I kept, I kept contacting them every two weeks for eight months. Eight months, I said, what happened to my videos? Yes, okay, he took the channel. Yes, he took the channel. Where are my videos? Nobody answered. Nobody answered. Have no fear, stand still. Where are my videos? Have no fear, stand still. Where are my videos? No answer. Have no fear, stand still. For every time nobody answered, I said, have no fear, stand still. Cause, cause what wanted to happen was, do have fear. You lost your videos too. Everything's gone. Have no fear, stand still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I had no idea what that meant at the time. I just kept saying, have no fear, stand still. As I went through everybody never responding, what happened to 2,800 videos and nobody's answering me. Have no fear, stand still. Stay calm, have no fear, stand still. This is what you must do when you don't hear answers, when you're waiting for the Lord, when you're waiting for an answer and you don't hear it, keep saying to yourself, have no fear, stand still. God's got this. Have no fear, stand still. God's got this. The Lord, the Lord will fight for you. And you shall what? You shall what? Hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you. You shall what? Hold your peace. Have no fear, stand still. Have no fear, stand still. How do you hold your peace? Have no fear, stand still. Speak it. Speak peace. Have no fear, stand still. Be still and know that I'm God. Have no fear, stand still. Be still and know that I'm God. Have no fear, stand still. And be still and know that I'm God. I'm saying over, I'm burning that into my spirit. I burn it in my spirit. So I live. Have no fear, stand still. Be still and know that I'm God. God's got this. I'm trusting. I'm trusting. I'm speaking trust. I'm speaking faith. Have no fear. Stand still. God's got this. I trust you, Lord. Then we did. So as we kept doing that, number number five. Number five. What do we do? What were we doing? What were we doing? Walking by faith and not by sight. That's number five. Number five. What we're doing? Walking by faith, not by sight. We kept praising, kept praying, and doing the word. Kept praising, kept praying, and do the word. Kept doing it. We didn't worry about, didn't worry about the devastation. Kept praying, praising, and the word of God. Walk by faith, not by sight. We we live that. We live it already. We live it already, but we really had to live it during the hacking month. And as a channel, the channel was building. People were starting to find us. We kept praying, praising, and word of God. Have walked by faith. Do what God says. God said, move to the other channel. We moved to the other channel. Kept praising, kept praying the word of God. As 2 Corinthians 5 7. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5 7. 2 Corinthians 5 7. Walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Then number six. Number six. In order to believe that anything had happened, even with the devastation, I had to say, is there anything too hard for God? Number six, is there anything too hard for God? Sometimes we place limitations on God. Sometimes our own mouth says, man, man, you know what? I don't know. I'm praying. See, after, after about six months, after six months, and still nothing, six months, nobody's answered me, nothing's happening, the other channel seems lost, they keep, they, they keep trying this and that, it keeps going back to the hacker, I even, I even, I got mad one night, I even emailed the hacker, did nothing, <laughs> he probably just laughed at me, but still, 
I had to what? I had to what? I said, you know what? Don't panic. Have no fear, stand still. Is there anything too hard for God? Have no fear, stand still. Is there anything too hard for God? See, what we're doing is encouraging yourself. I'm doing, I'm using the word to encourage yourself. When you're going through something, I'm giving an example of when you're going through something, what I was doing is speaking the word to myself to encourage myself. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And how do you encourage yourself? By speaking the word of God to, your, to yourself and to your situation. So as I kept saying, I know, I, I, I can't, I just can't believe, I just can't believe that 2,800 videos are gone. I can't believe it. Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? Devil, devil, yeah, those videos are gone. Those videos are gone. Get you behind me, Satan. Is there anything too hard for God? If God wants it back, he'll bring it back. Is there anything too hard for God? And whatever happens, whatever happens, I'm going to praise God in hell. Whatever happens, I'm going to praise God in hell. Now, I'm giving you examples of what was keeping my mind sanity during the eight months. As we continue to build the new channel, I kept seeing things. that were we, we couldn't, we lost Super Chat. We lost all these things because I was considered a brand new channel. I kept telling people, I am not a brand new channel. Yes, yes, I'm new to this channel, but I've been on YouTube for 13 years. But it was as if... I had never been on YouTube before. Have no fear, stand still. Is there anything too hard for God? Yeah, you can't get that back because you're a new channel. Have no fear, stand still. Is there anything too hard for God? They kept telling me what I couldn't do. You can't do that. You, your channel is too new. Your channel is too small. You can't get that because your channel is too young, too small. Have no fear, stand still. Is there anything too hard for God? So, by saying that, that's Jeremiah 32, 27. Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Says the Lord. Jeremiah 32, 27. You must remember that. Burn that scripture. When you feel like, when you feel overwhelmed. When you feel overwhelmed. Re remember that verse. Behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And we know the answer. We know the answer. No, there isn't anything too hard for God. With God, all things are possible. So we must remember that. You must remember that when you're in overwhelm. Remember that after being blindsided. I'm giving you examples of what the scriptures do when you're blindsided. You're blindsided. And you see no answer. You see no answers. But use the word of God to encourage yourself. When you're blindsided, you see no answers. And these words... These scriptures give you strength. Number seven. Now, number seven. Number seven. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Romans 12, 19. Romans 12, 19. One night, one night about month seven. Now, remember, for seven months, right now we're month seven. Seven months. Nobody's answered me. Nobody's giving me any response. I'm, I'm, I'm contacting people every two weeks. Where are my videos? Where are my videos? Where are my videos? Nobody's answering. Nobody's answering. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit says, wait a minute. Don't get upset. Don't get upset. This channel belongs to me, says the Lord. This channel belongs to me. The hacker didn't hack you. He hacked me. He hacked me, says Lord. So guess what? Vengeance is mine. So you just hold your peace. You just you just calm down, chill, stand still. In the presence of the Lord, just chill, stand still. I got this. Because vengeance is mine, says Lord. The hacker didn't hack my channel. He hacked the Lord's channel. So guess what? The, he, he's in a heap of trouble. You messing with God's, you messing with God's channel, you're messing with God's channel, and you hack God's channel and think nothing's gonna happen to you. So as, as as soon as I felt that in the spirit, I calmed down. I completely calmed down. I said, okay, Lord, okay, Lord, you got it. Lord, you got it, Lord. What whatever's gonna happen to the video was whatever's gonna happen to the videos, 
I'm calming down now, Lord. I was upset every time I said, where are my videos? And nobody answered. Where are my videos? Nobody answered. And then God said, hey, vengeance is mine. Just calm down. And so a sudden peace came over me that it's going to be all right. Either way, it's going to be all right. Because God's got this. God's got the channel. He said, either I'll bless you with the other channel or I'll bring this one back. You just have faith. Listen closely. He said, either I'll bless the other channel or I'll bring this one back. You just stay calm. You walk by faith and not by sight. Because right now, sight says nothing's there. Sight says nothing there. Walk by faith. Have no fear. Stand still. With God, all things are possible. Is there anything too hard for God? That's what you're saying. When you walk by faith, not by sight, you're saying to yourself, is there anything too hard for God? With God, all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what you're saying when you walk by faith and not by sight. You speak into your faith. Encourage yourself in your faith walk. You keep holding on to God's unchanging hand as we say it today. Now, what are we doing? What are we doing at the point? Number nine, what are we doing at that point? We're pressing, pressing toward the mark. We're pressing through negativity. We're pressing through. Yeah, the devil, look at what you lost. Look at what you lost. Get thee behind me, Satan. I know what I lost. Guess what? I may have lost it, but God's going to rebuild it. Yes, yes, devil. Yes, you may have got this, devil. Guess what? God's going to rebuild it, Lord. God's going to rebuild it somehow. No matter what the devil said, no matter what the devil said, I kept saying, God's going to bring it back somehow. God's going to bless us somehow. Either the new channel or the old channel. God's going to take it. God's got it. So I'm pressing. I'm pressing through negativity. The devil's whispering in my ear, you'll never get anything back. You lost everything. Look at you. You lost viewers. You lost views, subscribers, videos. You lost. Get me behind me, Satan. Have no fear. Stand still. Be still. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know I'm God. That's Philippians 3.14. Philippians 3.14. Philippians 3.14. I press. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians, Philippians 3.14. I press. You keep praising. You're pressing. When you praise Instead of, in, instead of depression, you're pressing the depression. You keep praying, keep praising, keep praying, keep pressing. And you're pressing through negativity. You're pressing through negativity and, uh, and doubt and fear and worry and stress. You keep praising and praying. That's pressing through negativity of telling you it's not going to be all right. It is going to be all right because I'm pressing. I'm walking by faith. Not by sight. I'm pressing to believe. I'm pressing to praise. I'm pressing to stay connected. Even though it looks negative, it looks dark. I keep on pressing. I keep on pressing. Keep on pressing. And number number nine. Number nine. What we did the entire eight months, we remained, we remained steadfast. We remained steadfast the entire eight months. On the other channel, it was as if there was no other channel. We praised and worshiped on the other channel as if there was no other channel. And at the time, there wasn't. There was no other channel. The, the This channel right here was gone. By sight, by sight, this channel was gone. So we kept praying and pressing and praying and pressing, kept having faith that somehow, somehow, Either God's going to bless the new channel or something's going to happen to the old channel. I, but I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. By month, by the end of month seven, by the end of month seven, by the end of month seven, I just said, you know what, Lord, Lord, just, Lord, just, Lord, Lord, Lord whatever happens, Lord. I just said, my, my frustration, I just said, Lord, listen closely. By the end of month seven, I said, Lord, I've been asking these people for seven months, where are my videos? And nobody is giving me an answer. They keep, they, they, they keep, give, they give me lip service. They give me lip service and saying nothing, talking loud and saying nothing. I'm asking one question, where 
are my videos and nobody's answering the question so i said lord lord i get now here's the key here's the key i said lord i just give it to you lord lord i give lord i give it to you i guess whatever happens lord i guess if i if i need to reteach if i need to reteach all those you guys saw it i said if i need to reteach all those lessons i'll do it lord i give it to you lord i have no idea lord i just i'm just going to start reteaching lessons i'm going to write down all the lessons that were lost and just one by one i'm going to reteach every lesson that was lost so lord i just give it to you lord give me strength lord let me know what lessons to teach let me know which lessons to reteach but lord i i i, I can't I just give up i give up trying to ask them what is going on with my videos so lord i just give it to you i give it to you lord that's the end of month seven that's what am i doing i'm remaining steadfast that's look at james 1 12. look at james 1 12. james 1 12. remaining steadfast when you remain steadfast it means in the midst of darkness you're not changing James, what was it? James 1 12. 1 12. Blessed is the man, blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life with which the Lord has promised to those who love him. That's the, that's the scripture for remaining steadfast. Number nine. Blessed is man who endures temptation, in our case, endures the hacking. For when he has been approved, what do you mean approved? What do we do? For eight months, what do we do? Praised, pray, word of God. For eight months, praise, prayed, word of God. We've remained steadfast. We didn't change. So when he's approved, he will receive the crown of life, which Lord has promised to those who love him so here comes here comes the here comes month eight now remember we did all these things one through nine we did all these things one through nine for eight months all of a sudden all of a sudden out of nowhere now remember i can i contacted youtube every two weeks for seven months nobody answered nobody answered and then month eight, I get an email, uh, 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 Fitz Houston, we heard you got hacked. Uh, uh, please fill out this form so we can look into it. <laughs> I, I thought it was an old email. I said, wait a minute. You heard I got hacked. I, I told you that eight months ago. What do you mean you heard I got hacked? Yes, I got hacked. They sent me an email eight months later. Uh, we heard you got attacked. Let's look into let's look into this and see what happened. So we go back and forth. We're going back and forth for about five days. They give me this, they give me that, and nothing's working. They give me this, give me that, nothing's working. So four days, it it really looked like it really looked like it was really gone. It looked like nothing was working. They kept saying we do this, no, it didn't work. Do that, didn't work. This didn't work. Do that, didn't work. I say, well, I guess that hackers. I guess now here's my mistake. I said I guess the hacker has. A, I guess the hacker's got a really hold on this. But then, then I forgot. Then I forgot. Is there anything too hard for God? The next day, the next day, YouTube says, "Well, look, since you've proven who you are, and you sent us videos, you sent us pictures of your old channel. I fortunately I took a picture of the old channel with a hacker's face on it." That picture I took, I screenshotted way back. I screenshotted day one when the, my videos were on the screen and the hacker's face was up there. That picture proved to them that was my channel and the email I had the hacker didn't have. So they said, well, what we've done, we've just, we've just deleted every password to that email. Now put your, put your password back in. So they deleted everything that had anything to do with the hacker on my email and wiped it clean. And said, now put your, put your email password back in there. So I did that. The question is now, what, what, but my question is, 
But what happened to the videos? They said, they said, your videos are still here. Your videos have, are still here. But the hacker, the hacker took the time to hide 1,500 videos. The hacker was trying to hide all the videos. He didn't delete. He didn't delete. And get this. He didn't delete them. He hid them. So all the videos were still there, but he hid them and made them unlisted. So when 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 they gave me a new password, my password took me to the back office, and then I saw all 2,800 videos. All 2,800 videos were hidden. Pra the praise the praise report they were not deleted. The praise report was they were not deleted. So one by one, I have to. I've done about 1,500 so far. I one by one, I got to go back and unhide, unhide. They took the time. You have to go to each video one at a time to hide them. That means somebody took the time to hit 1,500 videos one at a time to hide them. That's intent. Like John says, that is pure evil intent to take the time to hide 1,500 videos one at a time. So praise God, praise God. I found out that I have found all 2800 videos are there now what did god just do restoration god he'll turn your life around what did god do he'll turn your life around he turned your channel around full restoration he restored all 34,000 subscribers he restored all 2800 videos he restored 11.7 million views that we had worked over years. He restored the entire channel as if nothing had ever happened. He'll turn your life around. He'll turn everything around. He'll turn everything around. He turned everything around as if nothing had ever happened. Whoa, whoa, whoa. excuse me, whoa. <laughs> that is a whoa moment. That is pure evil reversed in your face. <laughs> let me calm down. So, so I just want to, I want to let you guys understand. Would you understand how we were using the word of God to make it through eight months? I, I, had, to, I had to take the time to let you understand what we were doing in the word of God to make this happen. We never gave up. We kept praying. We were content. We praised God anyhow. We didn't let the, we didn't let the hacker stop us. We kept spreading the word. We kept praising, kept praying, kept praising, kept praying, kept praising, kept praying. And guess what? God turned everything around. You will not need to fight this battle. The Lord, the Lord will fight for you. And you shall what? Hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you. And you just do what? One thing. Hold your your peace and that's what i'm saying that is the miracle of this whole thing and we and we witnessed it together we as a fellowship witnessed it together we survived it together you guys you guys on the other channel with me we survived it together we praised our way through together we prayed our way through together we had the word of god together we kept doing it every single day as if that old the new channel was the old channel we're doing a, we call those things that be not as though they were the old channel the new channel became the old channel and god turned around and brought back the old channel i see in the future and you look much better than you look right now we applied the word of god to that situation and that's what i want to show you now quickly let me get the poems wait we change the angle. The sun's the sun's creeping. Let me get a different angle here. I'm running from the sun. <laughs> it's it's still humid. It's still humid here, but running. Okay. Quickly, let me give the poem right quick. Actually, the the main poem, the main poem was share with you that we applied in this lesson. 
Amen. Amen, Snurks. Uh, we had breakthroughs and revelations during the attack. And what he did for evil was used for good. Amen. Hey, Candy. Hey, Candy. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. What the devil meant for evil, God turned around. And, and, and some people, some people, because, get this, because we went to the sports channel, some people are getting saved who were at the channel only for sports. That channel was a sports channel. And now they're getting the word and sports on the other channel. So some people love the channel because the word and sports are together. So I'm 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 putting every playlist. I'm giving the playlist for this channel is also on the other channel. So if you go to either channel, you're gonna find the playlist of both channels on both channels. So regardless of which channel you're on, you'll see the archives on both channels. Now, this channel is where the live streams are. The other channel will see all the archives. So if you go to the other channel, you'll still see all the archives there as well. Amen. I want to let you know. Let you know. Amen. Now, I wrote a poem. Many of you remember this. I wrote a poem right after the heck the first poem i'll share with you this poem i wrote the week after the heck it said the devil tried the devil tried to steal my joy the name is poem the first poem the devil tried to steal my joy and he does this with you too he does this with us personally too i'm i'm sharing with the channel but he does this to us personally he tries to steal your joy amen Okay. The devil tries to my joy. Now, the the scripture, the scripture for that is the text Isaiah fifty five eleven. Isaiah fifty five eleven. That's the text. That's the scripture for number one. Our text is the scripture for the first poem. The word will not. The word will not return void. Doesn't matter if, you, if the devil tries to steal your joy, and you keep speaking the word, and you keep speaking the word. The word of God will never return void. So when you feel like you're under attack and the devil's trying to steal some joy, you speak the word of God over it. And guess what? The word will not return void. Amen. Okay. Here, here's a poem. The devil really tried to steal my joy when he hacked my YouTube channel. He thought termination would shut me up. But Jesus is on the panel. He thought by losing likes, videos, and views, he would bring my energy down. But instead, my energy increased even more and turned his smile into a frown. Then he attacked the praise mobile when I praise, where I praise each and every day. Even though damaged, the car still worked. So, my pr so I praised my anger away. The devil does everything he can to steal your joy and your peace. But when you walk in your authority, the nonsense he tries will cease. So don't put up with the devil's ways of seduction, distraction, and lies. Just stay connected to our Lord and Savior, and he'll lose no matter what he tries. The devil tries to steal my joy. Because remember, remember, right after, right after, remember, Right after the channel was hacked, a month and a half later, they stole my 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 converter, my my converter on the car. The, the first the channel was attacked, and then the praise mobile was attacked. So we lost the channel, and then someone stole my catalytic converter, and then the car was attacked. Don't you notice? Isn't it funny? The channel is praising, and the praise mobile is praising. Both things where we praise were attacked. The channel and then the praise bill. Thinking, thinking, if there's no praise bill, how is he gonna praise? And we kept praising. Even with a loud car. <laughs> the car sounded like a motorboat. We kept praising. What do we do? What do we do? We kept praising, kept praying, kept praising, kept praying. And then I found a mechanic that gave me a good price to fix the converter. So we kept praising our way through. We kept pressing through the adversity 
that we met. And I want you to do this in your own life. I'm, I'm giving an example of what we did the channel, but I want you to do what we're talking about today. Do all this in your own life when you're under challenges. Amen. Amen. Number two. Number two. Second poem. When the world knocks you down. When the world knocks you down. Next poem. When the world knocks you down. Now we know this. I, I shared these. I shared this poem at some point last year as well. The scripture is James 1. James 1. The verses are James 1, 2 through 4. James 1, verses 2 through 4. Count it all joy when you go through various trials. Count it all joy when you go through various trials. That's James 1, 2 through 4. Because remember, when you go through various trials and you understand that God is using trials to make you stronger, it means you're going to be stronger at the end of it. And we are. We praise through the entire year. We praise through this for eight months. And now we walk in victory together again on the original channel. But it's because we didn't stop praising. We didn't stop praying. And we didn't stop doing the word. We kept doing what we're doing as if the channel never disappeared and step right back into it. Amen. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a poem. When the world, when the world knocks you down, when the world knocks you down, the word can pick you up. You have no choice to make. Do you believe in who you are in Christ or give in to the worldly voice? The voice in the world will bring you down and fill you with a heart of doubt. It'll make you believe those lies so you don't want to try to find a way out. Out of chaos, out of confusion in this world, out of pain and strife, the devil is focused on only one thing. He's trying to destroy your life. When the world knocks you down, the word can pick you up if you choose to use your power within. But if you don't use it, you invite the devil in and then you'll start, he'll start attacking you again. When the world knocks you down, the word can pick you up. That should be an easy choice. But if you don't choose to walk in God's word, you'll soon give in to the world's voice. The world knocks you down, the word will pick you up. Don't let go, don't let go of God's unchanging hand. Don't let go of the word of God. Don't let go. That's how you get up. We fall down, but we get up. A saint is just a sinner who fell down and got back up. The word of God will give you strength to get back up. Over whatever the blind side is, whatever overwhelm, you fall down, get up. The word of God will pick you back up and get you back on track. Amen. Amen. Number three. Number three. We, this is this is this is us number three but jesus brought me out but jesus brought me out number three but jesus brought me out how many of you gave so many of you have given me a testimony of how jesus brought you out how jesus saved you we've been sharing testimonies all year how jesus moved in your life this poem is called but jesus jesus brought me out we sing you save me almost every day he saved us from something every day and brought us to this day the scripture is ephesians 2 ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 that reads two eight nine Eight nine. For by grace, for by grace, you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves; it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. See, it's not is God's grace and mercy that saves us. It's nothing you did. It's God's grace and mercy. So when we say when we thank God for. What he's done. Thank you, Lord, for say thank you, Jesus. You saved me. It's what he did for us. We didn't do a thing. 
He saved us, not us. So the poem is, when Jesus brought me out, it goes like this. Lord, I can never say enough thank yous every day for all you've done for me and all you brought me through. I was down and out in depths of despair and didn't know what I and didn't know I could call on you. Destroyed in the world by so many but destroyed in the world by so-called friends. Even loved ones pulled me down. I had no sense of purpose, and a part of me had died and turned my smile into a frown. And just when I thought I was going to end it all, I heard a quiet voice that spoke to me. He then showed me my life and said I must live. And with those words, he truly set me free. No longer was my life filled with no light. I was free from all darkness I had within. The Holy Spirit heard, gave me hope with a powerful word, and the hope that I can finally live again. Now look back and remember where I've been. I know Jesus was there even then. I was almost taken out, but Jesus brought me out. Now every day, no matter what, I know I win. So you see, that's why I shout every time I think about when the devil thought he had me in every way. He tried to take me out, but Jesus brought me out. And that's why I shout and praise each and every day when Jesus brought me out. And I think we all, we all have a shout. You guys have shared some great testimonies. We all have a shout when Jesus brought me out. And you remember, you know what he did. We say, what if it hadn't been, if, what if, if God had not been on my side, if God had not been on my side, where could we be? Jesus brought you out. Jesus brought you out. And last short one, last poem, I must persist. Last poem, I must persist. And this goes for all of us. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through, we must persist. And that's again the scripture. We must press. Uh, Dan, don't have, uh, 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 Dan, don't have to type it again. We did it earlier. The scripture we did earlier, Philippians 3.14. We pressed. You must persist means I must press through the struggle. Press through the barrier. Press through whatever is trying to block your way. Keep pressing. How do you, how do you press? How do you press? Praise. Pray. Word of God. How do you press? Praise. Pray, word of God. How do you press? Praise, pray, word of God. That's how you keep pressing. That's how you keep pressing. Last, last poem. I must persist. I must persist. I must persist in the goal I seek to keep my eyes on Him. Things in this world try to pull me down. Without Him, my chances are slim. Chances are slim that I'll see the good Lord if I don't get my grip. For the pride of life and lust of flesh will surely make me slip. So I must persist and hold on to you, Lord, for within your word there's power. For I seek to keep my eyes on you, for you are my strong tower. I can't get involved with pleasures of this world meant to pull me away from God's grace. For if I do, Sin will abound and I'll be all over the place. So I must persist. It's important to me. There is no contemplation. I'm here to please God and keep my eye on the prize. Spread the world across the nation by keep persisting. And that's where I close. This entire lesson. This entire lesson was to let us understand what these topics we talked about are persistence praise god anyhow the nine things i talked about earlier the things we talked about in order to survive this this past nine months on the channel these things work in your personal life i was giving an example on the channel of what we did as a fellowship but these same things work in your personal life every, every, everything we talked about everything we talked about can work in your personal life do the exact same things we did on the channel praise god anyhow what we do we praise god anyhow you keep your mind still on him you trust god 
have no fear, stand still, walk by faith, not by sight. Is there anything too hard for God? Vengeance is the Lord's. Keep pressing and remain steadfast. That works in our personal life as well. And that's why I want to leave this with you. Use everything we talked about today in your personal life against challenges, against struggles, against attacks, against whatever it is in the world trying to pull you down. Use the very same things we use against the channel in order to survive and get restoration. God is the same what? Yesterday, today, forevermore. And the word works yesterday, today, forevermore. So we keep praising. We keep doing it. Same thing. Keep praising. Keep praying. And word of God. Every day. Keep praising. Keep praying. Word of God. Speak it. Hear it. Think it. Do it. Speak it. Hear it. Think it. Do it. Speak the word. Hear the word. Think the word. Do the word. Speak the word. Hear it. Think it. Do it. Every day. Live it. Live it. Do it every day. And that is the key. Amen. That is the key. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this lesson, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson to be able to learn how to make it through every challenge, Lord. But use the, the biblical life lessons, Lord, you've given us through the Word of God to be able to use the Word in every situation to walk in victory over the devil in every situation, Lord. Lord, bless us, Lord, as we leave this place today, Lord. Bless each fellowship member right now who may be dealing with any kind of challenge right now, Lord. Give him strength, Lord, to use what we talked about today, Lord, in the challenge, in the struggle, in the attack, in the infirmity, whatever it is, Lord. Help us, Lord, to remember to use these principles we use today, Lord, so that full restoration can take place, Lord, in your time. Because bottom line, we know, Lord, that you got this. We say thank you right now in Jesus' name. Before we close, I know someone's watching right now. Someone's watching right now the channel who just is amazed how this fellowship, how we talk about the fellowship resiliency, how we stayed focused for eight months and came back to the original channel, the miracle of the year. But someone's watching right now who doesn't understand why this fellowship is so on fire every day. So right now I'm going into the closing prayers and the prayer of salvation as always. Please no typing until after the closing prayers. Anything typed during the closing prayers is to leave our respect for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to the person listening and you've been here the whole time. And you heard the praise, the worship, the fellowship. And you see the love among this fellowship. But right now you can't connect because right now your life is falling apart. Worry. Fear, stress, anxiety is all over you. Families turned away from you. Friends stab you in the back. And you may even feel like giving up on life itself right now. Yet somehow you find yourself on this channel and have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you here. You're not here by accident. God brought you here because God sees what you're going through right now. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. And that's why you're here. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back to sin. And now your life is falling apart because you chose to go back to sin. And now the devil will tell you once you leave God or fail God, you could never go back. And that right there is a lie from the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you said the prayer of salvation and fell back into sin, there is nothing the devil can do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life. Recommit your life to Christ. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So right now, if you're backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, or right now you're overwhelmed in darkness and depression and worry and fear, or you just don't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, either way, I want you to pray with me. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe He died on the cross for me and my sins. 
and was raised from the dead. I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life, but I live up to you first. Create in me, Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that's not like you. In Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is in the right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us, that teaches us, that guides us, and also convict us when you're not walking God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And then he'll tell you how to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day. Not just every Sunday, every day. Spend time with God. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh. Feed your faith, starve your doubt every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you will feel in your life, which is God let you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. And next step is to repent. And repent means to change your ways. Salvation is, is not complete until you stop doing the sin you used to do. And as the Holy Spirit gets stronger in you, He'll give you strength to no longer do the sins you used to do. And before you know it, you'll be living your life for the Lord. His will, His way. Amen. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spiritual retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit named a name seen or unseen who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. And we cast all you demonic spirits out of mind, out of our spirit, out of our home, out of our kids, out of our marriages, back to the pit of hell from whence you all came in Jesus' name. The Father God loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy. Loose peace beyond understanding. Loose restoration, Lord. Restore every area of life, Lord. Loose reconciliation, Lord. Bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, please keep your hands of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing. By your stripes, we heal. And every day, Lord, every day we confess it. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus every day. Confess it and thank him. Confess it and thank him every day. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S. H. Pray that if something happens, loose supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings, Lord, your blessings of abundance rain down, Lord, rain down on a fellowship, every financial need, whatever it is, for you to supply all our need according to your riches in glory. Christ Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not for anything. The Lord is my shepherd. The fellowship, let's say this part together. Repeat after me. For I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am blessed going in and blessed going out. I am blessed that I may be a blessing to others. I am out of debt. All my needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. I am a child of God. And nothing shall my enemies hurt me or block my blessings in any way. In Jesus' name. And finally, Lord, finally, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle to pray for right now. And now we know every day. We take time every day to visualize it. See your miracle. See it every day. See it. Believe it. And then receive it in your heart. And as you receive it in your heart, 
expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the exact when. But because we don't know when, that means any day, any day you wake up, could be a day of the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. So expect your miracle every day. May the Lord bless you and keep you family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord set his face of divine approval upon you and give you peace. That you may be a blessing to every you touch and speak to. A blessing to everyone you pass by. And bless. Or open your mouth. Because the love and light of the Lord is all over you 24-7-365, including leap year. So Father God, all these things we ask, Lord. All these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. The fellowship say amen. Amen. Amen.